Praise the Lord, we're back. Um, the last video that I made took about 10 or so minutes, and uh, we got into the first verse of the book of the Revelation, so hopefully we can move a little more quickly than that, but I'm not going to move quickly for the sake of moving quickly. I'm going to get into this, uh, into this word, into this book, and share some things with you that the Lord has given me for his people. So blessed be the name of the Lord. Before I go into that, I uh, between the last video and this one, I went out on a call. For those of you who don't know me, I have my own business. I have a hotel taxi, so when I get a call on my cell phone, uh, many times I have to just take off and go. Uh, I'm pretty much on call 24-7, but it's a business that takes very good care of me and allows me a lot of freedom and the opportunity to share the Word of God with people, so people that go to different states and different countries all over the world. So it's a great blessing. Praise the Lord. Those of you who pray for me, please pray that the Lord would continue to use me in the work that I do, that I may meet people that would have ears to hear and spread this gospel all over the world in Jesus' name. I went on a, um, an errand this morning. I went to buy some money, and I just want to talk to you about that for a moment. Um, for those of you who don't know, this right here is not money. This is a, this is a receipt. It's a receipt for nothing. It's backed up by nothing. Um, it is viewed as... as uh, legal tender. It says on it that it's legal tender for all debts, public and private, but it's not money. It's not based on actual money. Money is gold and silver. And uh, this morning I went and, and bought some more money. Um, and I, I don't mean to, I'm not trying to say, well, I'm rich and everybody else is, you know, I'm not rich at all. But uh, I want to show you something. This right here is a Krugrand. It's one ounce of gold. It's worth $20. Today, it will cost you $1,638 to buy this. And I bought it, and, and I have a few others, thank God. And I bought it because it's money, number one, and uh, the paper that I used to purchase it with is not money. And one day very soon, the paper that I used to purchase it with is going to be worth nothing, and this will still be money. Um, in the Bible, gold and silver is the only money that is mentioned. Um, in the founding documents to this country, gold and silver is the only money that is mentioned. Um, Federal Reserve notes that we use as currency are not money. Okay, they are a receipt for nothing. Very soon they're going to be worth just that, nothing. And the reason why this $20 gold piece costs $1,638 American dollars is because it's not because the gold has become worth more. It's because the currency that we use has become worth less. So this $20 gold piece is going to cost you of your American dollars, which are worth nothing, 1638 of them. Because your dollar is worth that much less. If that was the only thing to look at to show you that the end of this nation is near and that the end times are near and that the Lord is coming soon, then it should be sufficient. But there are a plethora of other things if you look around to show you that this nation is disappearing. This nation, the United States of America, contrary to the opinion of many people, um, is not in the scripture. There is no mention of the United States of America in the scripture, in prophecy, anywhere in the Bible. The United States of America is a nation that did not exist when the scriptures were written and is a nation that will not exist as it is today when the end time prophecies are fulfilled in the scripture. This country is very soon to fall, and I'm going to digress from that because that's a whole different subject, and I'm going to get back into the revelation with you. Blessed be the reading of the word of the Lord. The revelation of Jesus Christ, and I'm just beginning at the beginning again. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Okay, I did a video a while back about the the seven stars in the hand of, of the Lord Jesus Christ and who the angels of the seven churches are. And Jesus Christ sent his angel in the last chapter of the Revelation. He said, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Okay, Jesus Christ sent his angel. It wasn't uh, an angel that he created like Gabriel or Michael, uh, a messenger who, went, who came to John and said, this is what the Lord says. It was the angel of the Lord. It was himself, Jesus Christ himself. Okay, because when the angel of the Lord speaks to John, he doesn't say, God said for me to tell you this. He said, this is what I say. I am the beginning and the end. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the Almighty, the Almighty God. And so the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ. Okay, there is only one God. 
There's only one sitting on the throne. There's only one judge of all the earth. There's only one who created the heavens and the earth. His name is Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And his name is proclaimed several times in the book of the Revelation. Verse 2, who bear record of the word of God, and the word who is referring to John right there, okay, his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. So Jesus Christ came to John, his apostle, and he gave him this revelation, one revelation, the revelation of himself, Jesus Christ, okay? And he commanded him to write it down, okay? So John bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Verse 3, blessed is he that readeth, and this is for you that have thought that you needed to be afraid to read the book of the Revelation because you might not understand it. Denominational teachers have made you afraid. The devil has made you afraid to read the revelation of Jesus Christ. Well, the revelation is the unveiling, and it is something that you need to know, and it's something that you should desire to know, and it is something that God has given you so that you can know it. So be not afraid, fear not, but believe the word of God and get into his word and see the revelation of Jesus Christ. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Okay, there's three things going on there at least. There's a blessing upon them that read and upon them that hear. Now, how could you read it and not hear it? Well, how could people be standing in front of Jesus Christ when, he's pre when he preached his word and he say unto them, how is it that you do not understand my speech even because you cannot hear my word? There are some of you out there who hear the word of God and there are some of you out there who don't. And you can sit in front of preachers every Sunday until the cows come home or until the skies fall and you will never hear the word of God because God has not given you ears to hear. But there are some of you out there who have ears to hear, and that's why Jesus said, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And if you have ears to hear, praise the Lord with me right now. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful and a great thing to have ears to hear. And those of us who have ears to hear, listen, it's not because we're better than anybody else. It's not because we're smarter than anybody else. It's not because we're richer than anybody else. It's not because we have... Um, anything better or any more merit than any other person on the earth is because of the grace of the Almighty God. He knew us before the foundation of the earth. Blessed be his name forever and ever. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. Keep those things which are written therein. To keep these things means to do them. Okay, to understand and do them. To, to cause your actions to be such as are affected by reading the Word of God. Okay, if we if we look into the perfect law of liberty and then we walk away and forget what manner of man we are, then we're like that that man who looked in the mirror and walked away and forget forgot what manner of man he was. James spoke about that. When we look into the perfect law of liberty and we do those things that are written therein, if we be a, a doer of the word and not just a hearer only, then we are blessed. Okay, so he, reading and hearing the Word of God is a wonderful thing, but if you don't do it, then you're not going to be blessed. You're going to be like that man who built his, his house on the, on the sand. Okay? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's move on. Verse 4. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia. Okay, so this letter is to seven churches which were in Asia. That's what it was originally delivered to. Okay, John was on the Isle of Patmos where he was exiled because he was an apostle of Jesus Christ and refused to compromise the word of God. Um, it is written in the book of Fox's Book of Martyrs that John was, uh, they attempted to murder him. They attempted to boil him in oil, actually. They attempted to lower him into a vat of boiling oil. And in fact, they did lower him into a vat of boiling oil. And the oil had no effect on his body whatsoever. And they so marveled at that that they were afraid and they just exiled him to an island where criminals were kept which is called Patmos, and that's where John was when he received this revelation from Jesus Christ. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. That is the name of the Lord. John was a Hebrew man. Jesus is the king of the Jews. He is a Jewish man, the son of God, and his name declares who he is. Jesus Christ means the one which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty who has come in the flesh to save us. That's what the name Jesus Christ means. And this, verse 4, from him which is and which was and which is to come, 
is not a bunch of adjectives describing who he is. It is his name. It is his name. It is declaring his name. Praise the Lord. Let him that hath ears to hear, hear what the scripture is saying to the people of God. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And we'll get into those seven spirits a little bit later because the scripture is going to talk about them. But they are seven spirits that go to and fro throughout the earth during different periods of time. Okay? They're full of eyes before and behind and they watch. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness. Okay? And from Jesus Christ. Why is it from him which is and which was and which is to come? And then it says, and from Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is not only... God the Father, the Almighty God, who came in the flesh. But Jesus Christ is also the name of his Son, a man, who was born of God, who was the Son of God and the Son of a woman. Therefore, he was called the Son of God and the Son of Man. Okay, Jesus Christ. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, he is the prophet that Moses spoke of. He is the one of whom Moses spake, saying, Behold, the Lord your God will raise up a prophet among you like unto me. Him shall ye hear, and everyone that will not hear the words of that, of that prophet, it shall be required of him. This is the one that Moses spoke of. This is why the Pharisees said to John, Art thou that prophet? And nobody had to describe what prophet they were talking about. They all knew what prophet they were talking about. And that prophet was Jesus Christ, and he is the faithful witness. He is the one who speaks the truth, and in him is no lie. In him is no sin, in him is no wickedness, in him is no guile. His words are like a polished shaft. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. The first begotten of the dead. He is the resurrection and the life. He is the one who has conquered death and hell and sin. And that is the reason why we can have a resurrection. Because Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And you can receive the Holy Ghost, Jesus Christ in you. The, the hope of glory. Because Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And he is risen from the dead because he was innocent when he died. The only man that ever lived that died innocent. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And he is risen from the dead, having conquered death and hell because it was impossible for death to hold him. Because he had no sin, he did no sin. He was innocent and righteous. And on his merit and in his name, there is salvation and hallelujah, deliverance from sin. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And the prince of the kings of the earth. The prince of the kings of the earth. He is the head of all principality and power. Every king shall bow down before him. There is no king that can stand against the Lord Jesus Christ and say, What doest thou? He is King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the Prince of the kings of the earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. This King, King of kings, Lord of lords, King of all the earth and heaven, came in the flesh and laid down his life and poured out his own blood so that you and I could live. Hallelujah. That is so awesome. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <clears throat> and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, hath made us, his chosen, his beloved, those of us who are accepted in the beloved, those of us who were known of him before the foundation of the world. He hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is a king and a priest. And he has called us brethren. The book of Hebrews says that he is not ashamed to call us brethren, for they that are sanctified and he that sanctifieth are all of one. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So Jesus Christ is a king and a priest. And if you're in Jesus Christ, then you are a king and a priest. Part of a royal priesthood. Okay? And your kingdom is not here on this earth. And if you're a man of God, your wife is not the first lady. And the riches of this world are not the kingdom that Jesus Christ has ordained for you. You rhema people, you word of faith people, you fake denominational people who think that God has ordained that you should be rich in this world. But, and when his word says that you say that you're rich and increased with goods and, and, and have need of nothing, and yet you're wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, have you never read the scripture, you rhema people, you word of faith people? You people that think that because you've amassed the treasures of this world that God has blessed you, you're deceived. Jesus Christ has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord with me right now. Blessed be the name of Jesus. To him be glory and honor and praise forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Behold. Look. Look. Behold. He cometh with clouds. And every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. All kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. If you're in Jesus Christ, my brother, my sister, when our Jesus comes and you see him and you point to him and you say, Behold, all kindreds of the earth shall mourn and wail because of him. All the denominations, all the religions, all the people that forsook any religion at all, all the multitudes of people on the earth who thought that they could be God over their own lives or invent God as they wanted him to be, all the people of the earth who were forward in their ways and stubborn, and would not bow down to Jesus Christ, would not cast themselves down upon that stone, but rather that stone will have to crush them. They will mourn and wail, because they will know in that hour that the word that they had heard about the gospel of Jesus Christ is indeed truth. But in that hour it will be too late, and they will mourn and wail because of him. Even so, amen. I'm going to stop this video right now, and we are at verse 7, the end of verse 7. May this word be a blessing to you, and I'm going to continue to make videos as the Lord permits me, uh, going through the book of Revelation, and I hope it will be a blessing to you in Jesus' name. And again, if you have questions or comments, please go ahead and make them. But if you think to, to argue and bring some other false religion or some other religious doctrine to me, remember that the Scripture teaches me that if any man comes to me and brings another doctrine, that I am not to receive him into my house, nor bid him Godspeed, nor will I with you. If you're willing to listen to the truth of the Word of God, and I'm willing to teach it to you. And if not, then if you want to argue, then please find somebody else's channel to argue with. Okay? I know that last day's prophecy is a, is a very popular subject for people to argue and contend about. That's not what I'm here for. Okay? If you feel that I've erred in something, show me from the Scripture. And if I've seen from the Scripture that I have erred, then I will repent. But I'm not here to argue with you about end times prophecy. I'm here to share with you what the Lord has given me from His Word. That's why I call my channel the Word Prophet Channel. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Peace be to you. In Jesus' name.